Well, I have a special way to get your attention today, so I hope you're listening. I thought we would play Name That Sound. So I'm going to play a sound for you, and you have to identify the sound. Here's your first one. If you guess a bubble popping, you're correct. Now I have another one for you. See if you can get, this one's a little bit harder. <laughs> and disturbing. If you guessed on this one, screaming goat, you would be correct. <laughs> All right, one more. So see if you can recognize this particular sound. If you guess the sound of silence, you'd be correct. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. <laughs>Good morning, First Baptist Aztec, and thank you for joining us in person or online. I'm Katie, and I'm so glad you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us. We believe First Baptist Aztec is a place for you to find hope, healing, and a church to call home. If this is your first time here, Pastor Mike would like to meet you outside the north doorway after service, where you will receive your favorite soda, candy bar, and a gift. Before we get started with worship, here's some of the things happening at First Baptist Aztec. So before I get started on this announcement, I would just like to say, I really don't think it's fair. We have a night of hymns. Why can't we have a night of hers? I mean hymns, right? A night of hymns? I don't understand. Wait, what? I, and, oh, oh. <laughs> a night of hymns. <laughs> My bad. Friday, August 19th, join us for a night of hymns. We will enjoy a meal together beginning at 5.30, and then our praise team will lead us in singing hymns, the other kind of hymns, at 6.30 p.m. Invite a friend to join you. Each Tuesday in August, our worship center will be open for you and for others in the community to come pray and seek the face of God. What is a need so big in your life that if it happened, it could only be explained by saying, God did it. That is what we are praying for on Tuesdays, from 5.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. in August. Make plans to come join us. Nothing is impossible with God. Senior adults, are you 55 or over? Join us Thursday, August 18th at 11.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall for a time of lunch and fellowship. After lunch, there will be an opportunity to engage in some ministry work together for our church and community. Come on out for a great time of fun, food, and fellowship. The next men's and ladies breakfast fellowships are Saturday, August 20th. The men at 7.30 a.m. in the fellowship hall and the ladies at 9 a.m. in the student ministry building. Students in the ninth grade or higher are welcome to come on their own and those younger can come with their parents. We look forward to seeing you. And by the way, I went to another one and it was just as good as the one I went to before. And if you're not coming, you're missing out. So come on out, y'all. The August baptism celebration will be on Sunday, August 28th at 4.30 p.m. Immediately following the baptisms, we will have a party in the fellowship hall. Cake and other goodies will be served. Be present to encourage those that are following Christ in baptism. If you wish to get baptized, please make an appointment with Pastor Mike. It's time to update the church directory again. Teresa Day will be taking photos Sunday mornings from August 28th through September 25th in the fellowship hall at 8 a.m. to 15 a.m. and after the second service. We need family photos of new families and updated photos of those already in the directory. We will also take photos of each individual person to update the database. We appreciate your help. And by the way, I just want to say on the side, we're definitely going to have to change Rex Davis's because two things. Number one, his hair got shorter. And number two, he got married. Congratulations. <laughs> That's it for this week's announcement. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at firstaztec.org and on social media. We believe God has something to say to you, and our hope is that you feel his love stronger than ever before. You picked a great day to be here, and welcome home. So I do have a joke for you. 
This one's good. I think it's corny, but it's good, and you'll love it. I love it, so you'll love it. So here we go. All right, so why did Samson avoid having arguments with Delilah? He didn't want to split hairs. I hope you get that. <laughs> if you don't get part of it, I mean, you need to go to Judges chapter 16. That will give you, and, and then the other part is, the other is a, a mix. Never mind. Have a great day. Bye. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. Amen. I know you are excited to sing about him. <laughs> That's a joke, guys. Come on. Stephanie. Well, actually, not really a joke. Let's worship together. Let's all stand up. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover.
give my sisters a chance to get here. We wanted to take just a minute to thank our church family, and I wrote it down because I knew I would blubber if I didn't. So before we begin, begin this morning, we want to thank each and every one of you who has texted, who has called, who has brought food, who has sent cards, who has um, called, who has visited. I've said that, so I need to just read. I just need to read. We are so very thankful to be so loved by our church family. We had been asking several of you to pray for mercy for my dad and to pray for heaven for him and god was faithful in answering those prayers we stand here today thankful that he has made it all the way home that he has finished his race but brokenhearted in the same breath because we miss our dad so if you'll take your bible this morning and open to first thessalonians 4 verse 13 please If you got it, say, I got it. This is in the New Living Translation, and it says, it won't get bigger. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Amen. Amen. We thought if we read it together, we would sound monotone in the same voice like when Dad would call us on the phone, and, or we would answer the phone, and Dad wouldn't know who it was. He's like, you guys just all sound the same. You know what? He stands today in perfection. He stands today with eyes that can see and a body that can walk. Hallelujah. And we give God glory for that Amen. today. Hallelujah. And he is going to be singing at the ancient gates this morning. So why don't you join us as we sing? And pray. Oh, do you want to pray? Yeah. I, bl I blew you off. I like praying. St I'll have, you want to pray? I like praying. Some say I get paid to pray. <laughs> oh, did you want me to start or to let him pray? When one prays, who prays? We all pray. Let's pray together. Almighty God, right. we do come to you as one, as a body. And we praise you, O oh God, for the truth of your word that was just read. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What victory we have through Christ who loves us. Amen. Praise you, Father, that as we grieve, and, and we're supposed to grieve, we grieve with hope yeah. that yeah. one day that hug will happen again. That one day, oh, we'll, we'll stroll the streets of gold together with those who have gone on before. Yeah. One day we get to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Father, until that day, oh, Lord, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit yes. oh, in, an, in such a way that people hear with our voices and they see with our actions the hope we have in this world and for all eternity, O oh God. Make it so. Amen. Now, Father, as we continue to sing songs to you, as we sing songs about you, Father, may we do it with all of our heart as praise directed straight to you and not to man. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
ocean gates there's a melody of ceaseless praise age to age the sound is only growing stronger and there's a throne beneath the name of names there is seated last 
Would you give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Praise his holy name. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, God, for the truth in that song. Reminding each one of us that we are yours. Oh, what a sweet, sweet reminder for all of us, Lord. That yes, as we are still here, but Lord, we are looking forward to that eternity with you. We are looking forward to, to just worship you, to see you. And to adore you, to exalt your name, and seeing our adoration and our exaltation to you, O oh God, our Savior. And Lord, we thank you as we continue to worship you, God. May this next song remind us that you are the one who loves us and we are your beloved and that nothing can ever separate us from your love that we have a special place in your hand oh god each one of us is written in your hand and lord here we are we just want to thank you god I just want to praise you. Amen. I've heard the accusation and I've heard the propaganda. I've heard the lies they whispered to my soul. I have been forsaken and I'll always be forgotten. No matter what I do, it's not enough. Oh, the then I heard a voice as it opened up the heavens, reminding me of who I've always been. me best is the one who loves me most no matter where we are in our
our walk with Jesus. No matter where, he loves us the most. He knows everything we're going through. He sees everything we try to hide. And he loves us the most. Sometimes when you're walking in those places, it's for hard to remember that he's the one that loves us most. As we walked through that final week with my dad, we had to remember that he is the one who loves him the most. No matter where we are, The one who knows me best is the one who loves me most. There is nothing I have done that could change the
God, we thank you for the promises that we have sung about this morning. God, that that there is a place for me. God, that I am who you say I am, not who the enemy says that I am. I am your beloved. And God, today we celebrate you because you are the victor. You have overcome the world. And Jesus, we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You cannot do ministry and stay clean. Not real ministry because you have to go hands-on. You have to be close to the ministry. You've got to walk through the ministry. And and so this this is an introduction this morning of a six or eight week series. I honestly, I don't have it all laid out yet. It's something that God has shown me and I'm like, wow. Titled, Get Dirty. Because you see... Some Christians might look at ministry and pull back and go, yuck, that's yucky. I don't want to get into all that. I just want to be saved and go to heaven. That's not the way it goes. 
You see, in order to be a follower of Christ, in order to be a follower of Christ, Jesus said this, if, any, if anyone desires to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. How often, church? Daily. daily. Let him take up his cross daily and follow after me. That's dirty. Taking up your cross every day, denying yourself every day, that's yucky. And yet that's what every follower of Christ is called to do. Now, think about this. When Jesus left heaven, he knew he was going to get dirty. He knew that. Maybe God has been speaking to some of us here today about getting dirty. Maybe some of you have pulled back. Maybe some of you are discovering it for the very first time. And maybe some of you have just grown weary and tired of getting dirty. And some of you may be going, you know, this whole following Christ is a whole lot dirtier than I thought it was. I think I'm going to take a break. You ever heard a Christian say something like that? Oh, come on, church, be real with me. You ever heard a Christian, has a Christian ever looked at you and said, you know, I'm tired of all this ministry stuff. It's just too heavy. It's too dirty. I'm going to take a break. Come on, raise your hand. You ever heard someone say that? Maybe you've said it. That's when we're listening to the wrong voice. And we're following the enemy's voice and not our Savior's voice. I want you to turn with me, if you would, to, in your Bibles. Take your Bibles and open them to Matthew chapter 20. If you didn't bring one with you in the chair seat, underneath the seat in front of you, there should be a Bible. It would be real close to one. Uh, pull that out. Open it to Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 through 28. It's going to be our text for this morning. Following Jesus is not clean. Following Jesus is a dirty calling. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. If you got it, say, I got it. Beginning in verse 17, the Word of God reads, Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way... He took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priest and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. I want us to pray together, but before we do, I want you to look right here at me for just a moment before we pray. All eyes right here for just a brief moment. I don't know where you're at spiritually, but every one of us are somewhere. All right? Maybe you're in the thick of ministry, and you've got dirt from head to toe, and you're having a blast. If so, hallelujah, praise God for you. Maybe you are a new follower of Christ, and you're just experiencing or learning that ministry is actually dirty work, and you're trying to figure all this out. You thought you were supposed to get away from all the yuck and just to walk on streets of gold while you're here on this world, and you're like, whoa, wait, what? I'm still walking, helping people out of the gutter. What's all this about? Maybe you're there. Maybe you're there. Or maybe, maybe you're in a third class. And that third class is, dude, you're tired. And it's going to be a whole lot easier if you just hide or try to sit in a pew, a seat, a chair, whatever you want to call it than it is to actually do ministry, and you're struggling. Chances are most of us are in one of those three camps. So with that thought in mind, I want us to talk to the Father 
and have him use this scripture. We're going to ask him to use this scripture to help us know how to continue to press on right where we find ourselves today. When one person prays, who prays? Let's pray together. Almighty God, together we ask you to teach us by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, some may be in this room, they don't know you yet. They're not a follower of Christ. And they might be even freaked out by all we're talking about. Father, draw them to yourself. Reveal your love to them. Show them, oh God, they have a purpose in your kingdom right here on this world. And it's doing ministry and getting dirty for you. Not for a church, not for a pastor, but for you. Father, for those that need encouragement, encourage. For those that, that uh, need your love, would you pour your love out? And Father, for those that need reminding of their why, would you remind them, please, today? In Jesus' name, amen. Some might be questioning, well, now, Pastor, you said Jesus knew he was going to get dirty. How How do we know that from Scripture? Well, don't turn there with me. I just want you to hear and you can write it down and look it up later, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Here's what the Word of God says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart." What a powerful word. You see, in Matthew chapter uh, 20, verse 17, our text for this morning, it says, now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. For you Bible scholars in the crowd, you know the depth of what that is saying. I want you to turn with me. Hold your place there in Matthew 20, but I want you to join me in Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, we're going to look at verses 4 through 7. Because this passage reveals what that means when it says Jesus was going to Jerusalem. Now Jesus was going to Jerusalem. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 7. If you got it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, oh me. All right, hurry up. Here we go. You're good. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, it's found on page 1,102, if that helps any, all right? Got it? The Word of God reads, beginning in verse 4, The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the Word that sustains the weary. Now, pause. You see, this is written about Jesus. This is a a, a foretelling of Jesus. This is a prophecy of Jesus. And it says the sovereign Lord, this is Jesus talking about God. God has given me, Jesus, a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Jesus knew he was going to get weary, and he clung to the word of God. He wakens me morning by morning wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Now, church, some of us may need to make that a memory verse. He wakens me every morning. He wakes me up. He, he, he stirs me. I can't even sleep past a certain time because I have prayed and God has answered my prayer. God, I want to wake up early to spend time with you. I want to hear from you. I want to be strengthened by you before I face my day. Some of us may need to pray a prayer like that. But some of us may be going, oh, I'm a night owl. Uh, You know that 
4.30 only happens once a day. That's in the p.m. It's also known as 16.30, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but if you're a night owl, maybe you need to pray a prayer similar. God, help me keep my eyes open. And don't let me lay my head on my bed. Don't let me just sit and watch TV or read a book. God, let me spend time with you so that I can be instructed by you. I can learn from you. And be prepared for the next day. So wherever camp you find yourself in, the excuses are zero. Amen? He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Verse 5, the sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. You see, Jesus was without sin. I have not turned away. Jesus followed the Father's path. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. You see, Jesus knew the Word of God. Jesus knew this was going to be happening to Him. This is a foretelling of Christ's coming. This was written before Jesus ever came to this earth as, a, as, as Jesus, as born of a baby, and then living in the flesh and blood, being 100% God and 100% man. Jesus knew he was going to be beat. He knew chunks of beard was going to be pulled out. He knew he was going to be mocked and spit on. Jesus knew that. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, verse 7, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. You see, the Bible scholars in the room knows that whenever it says in in Matthew chapter 20, verse 17, now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, they know that what that is referring to is Jesus setting his face like flint, hardened steel, ready, more than just a game face, ready to face everything that was going to come his way. I have a son named Sterling. Some of you have got to meet him. One of the sports he played in high school was, was, was track shot put. We have any shot putters in the crowd? Used to be shot putters? Wish you were a shot putter? Okay. There, I saw a couple of hands. I saw a couple of hands. It, it, it's, that's that heavy metal ball that you put up here by your chin. I don't know how to do it. But you put it up here by your chin, and you go in circles till you get dizzy, and you can't go anymore, and you throw it. Not quite like that, but sort of. Well, Sterling's coach told him, I've watched you throw. You're a big boy for your age. But you throw better when you're mad. You throw further when you're angry. I've seen you. So my son, in his infinite wisdom, said, Dad, I want you to come slap me. (laughs) Well, I was happy to oblige, right? (laughs) He he said, Dad, I want you to come slap me. Before I get up in that circle to throw, I want you to slap me. It's going to make me angry, and I'll be able to throw further. I'm telling you, I didn't want to slap the boy. I I, I was like, I don't want to slap you, man. I love you. I don't do this. Anyway, he goes, no, Dad, harder, harder. No, Dad, harder, harder. His face is red. I got fingerprints. One more time, Dad. He's got tears coming down his eyes. And he gets, I'm like, you can't be throwing now. You're all, you're crying. You can't do that. Anyway, he got up in that shot putter's box and he did it. And he threw and he heaved. What was he trying to do? He was trying to get that game face on. He was trying to get so focused that nothing could change his intent but breaking the last PR that he set. Every time he threw, he wanted to go further and further and further. Now, some of you may have played sports or you've watched sports on TV and you've seen that game face of the MMA fighters or or a boxer or a football player or a basketball player, and they've got that game face on the jaws kind of clenching back and forth and their eyes are focused. You take that times a hundred, and I think you've got what Jesus had on his face. It says his face was set like flint, hardened, pointed, And not going to change. So now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. You read that, I pray, in a little bit of a different way. On the way, he took the twelve aside and he said, hey, we're going to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man is going to be delivered to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. 
they will condemn him to death, and they'll be handed over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. On the third day, he'll be raised to life. Now, in Christian world, hear me, if you're a follower of Christ here today, you may read that and go, yeah, Jesus knew, and he was okay with it. Really? Well, let's think about this. Jesus had its emotions just like you and I, right? Right? He did. He had the same emotions you and I have. This is called a, flag, a flagrum. This is what they flogged people with. How about being hit with this? Oh, let's just say 39 times. What do you think? On your bare back. You see, on this is chunks of lead and sharp points down here. It, it, this is all sharp. This is all sharp. And it, it hurts your hand just to even rub it across. Imagine a man or two standing behind you and just knocking the fire out of your back with this, but not just hitting it, making sure, certain that those points went inside and ripped your flesh. You see, Jesus just got through telling his disciples, this is what I'm about to face when we go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be, I'm going to be mocked. I'm going to be spit upon. I'm going to be flogged. I'm going to be crucified, which means having nails driven into his hands and his feet and hanging on a cross till basically you suffocate because you can't take another breath. You see, Jesus knew ministry was dirty. And I know we could Monday morning quarterback and say things like, yeah, but, you know, he, he was God or he's Jesus and everything was going to work out. He knew he was going to raise from the dead. You know you're going to raise from the dead. Well, you can just take this beating. Would that be all right? You're born again. You're a follower of Christ. You know you're going to raise from the dead. If this kills you, you're going to heaven. Come on. Yeah, that's where our Lord was. Our hearts can get hardened to the truth of the gospel. Amen? And then, the way I read this text, you look at verse 20. He, he says, the, the, the writer says, Then the mother of Zebedee's son came up to Jesus. And he's like, she's like, hey, Jesus, um, can I ask for a favor? You know, Jesus, you've been over to the house several times. We've made that favorite dessert of yours. We've had some food. We've had some laughs. Jesus, can you, can you do me a favor? My, my son, my, 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 these two sons of mine, when you get to your kingdom, you know, you just told us you were going and all, can they, one of them sit on your left and one of them on your right? Would that, would that be cool, Jesus? Would you do that for me? Jesus just got through dumping his heart out saying, guys, this is what I'm about to face. And one of his friends come up and says, hey, can you do me a favor? Ministry is dirty. Well, that doesn't stop there because it, Jesus explains to her, hey, you know, it, it's not up to me to say who can sit on my left and my right, it, but it, it's, it's actually the, up to the Father. The Father's the one that's going to make that decision. Well, and then if you skip down just a little bit, verse 24, the other 10 found out what this one mom did. And now they're all up in arms. It says they were indignant. In other words, they were angry. They were mad. They were furious because they thought maybe these two were going to have a special privilege. Jesus just got through saying, I'm going to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And now they're sitting there yeah, yeah at each other because they're jealous of each other. Have you ever known ya ya to happen in a church? Oh, you have? You see, where people are gathered, there's going to be ya ya sometimes, right? It's not right. It needs to be squelched. But ministry is dirty. And that's what we see happening right here. The other ten rise up, they're indignant, they're angry, and they're all mad at each other. And they're saying, well, if anyone's going to be first, it's going to be me. And if there's anyone going to be great, it's going to be me. Look what I did, and I did this for Jesus, and I did this, and I did that. And Jesus is like, gang, I've bared my soul before you, and this is what you got? 
Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you have been dumping life on someone, and all of a sudden they go, yeah, how about those cowboys? And you're like, whoa, wait, I, I was just sharing with you my greatest hurts and fears, and you're talking about Dallas? Maybe you've been there. You see, ministry is dirty, and you will not experience anything that Jesus hadn't already experienced. But look what Jesus' response was. Look at verse 24. We'll pick up right there. If you got it, say, I got it. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them all together and said, you know, the rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. In other words, they, they, they know they're powerful and they make sure everyone else around them knows that they're powerful. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you, Jesus said. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That word servant right there in the Greek, and I'll butcher it because I'm not a a Greek guy, but uh, the Greek right there is diakonos, which means one that renders service to another. It's someone who attends to someone else's needs. Maybe you've got a servant, you know, in, in this age, and maybe they laid out their clothes for you. Maybe they got up early uh, and, and made meals. Maybe they stood there and waited to refill drinks, not seating, what might be seated, what everyone else was seated and eating. But then Jesus talks about the slave. He says, if you really want to be great, you see, he's telling this to the disciples, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. If you want to be great, become a servant. Being a servant is dirty work. But then he says slave. But he changes his verbiage. Look, if you not only want to be great, but you want to be first, become a slave. The Greek word for slave is doulos. This is a person of a lowly position, the dirtiest of jobs, owned by someone. Perhaps a servant got paid, maybe they didn't, but the slave was absolutely owned by the other person, no pay, and the dirtiest of jobs was saved for the slave. You know, as you think about the church, Some might think, well, you know, taking out the trash, that's, that's the work of a servant, might, some might say, or, or a slave. And Actually, pulling out the trash can liner, pull, pulling that out is not so bad. Hauling it out to the little can out there is not so bad. What's bad is whenever you take the bag and you push it back down inside and all that yuck comes out of it. Anybody ever experienced that? The smell of inside of a church trash can is yucky. But who are we emptying the trash for? Are we emptying the trash for one another? Are we emptying the trash for First Baptist Church, Aztec? Are we emptying the church for a pastor? Oh, no, no, and I pray no. You're actually emptying the trash for God. Some might look at cleaning toilets as being the lowest form. It depends on who you're doing it for. You see, if we get our eyes fixed on the things of this world, it becomes about us. If we get our eyes, we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, it becomes all about Him. 
to actually be a follower of Christ where he is the Lord, he is the king, he is the boss. But you know, the longer we follow him, the more we learn to surrender everything to his use. Some of you may be new followers of Christ. Maybe, maybe you've accepted Christ this year or last year. And you're learning some of this. You see, the longer you follow Christ, the more you realize that we are nothing and we own nothing because the day we followed him, it all became his, us and everything we have. And then there's that tension. The tension is we are nothing, we own nothing, everything we have is his. But the tension is we walk in boldness as the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. But you see, it's not really tension because Jesus taught us to walk like this. Being the Son of God, He walked, just as it says in verse 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to do what? What was it? What's it, what's it say right there? Can you see it? What's that word? Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to what? serve and to give his life as a ransom for many you see Jesus set the example for us walking in the power and the authority of the one true God and yet serving everyone the term servant leadership is what comes to mind as we process this, being a servant and leading as you serve. Don't turn there, but I, I want to read a passage. It's uh, found in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. 1 Chronicles 28, 20, here's what the Word of God says. Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. First Chronicles 28, 20. If you're already a follower of Christ, you're here this morning, you're already a follower of Christ, but you find yourself weary, you find yourself tired and of king, in kingdom service, would you ask God, seriously, would you ask God to refocus you on your why? Because you're not serving for you, you're not serving for your fame, you're not serving for your glory. You're not serving for a church. You're serving for his kingdom. Ask him to help you refocus. If you find yourself in the middle of ministry and you're dirty from head to toe and you're having a blast, oh, would you rejoice in the Lord today? Just thank Him for the joy, because that comes from Him. If you're here and you're not yet a follower of Christ, you, you've not yet admitted before God that you've sinned, you haven't yet turned away from that sin, the Bible calls it repentance, you haven't yet turned away from that sin and asked Jesus to save you from being eternally separated from God, you haven't yet ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, then today is your day. I'm going to have friends right over here on my left and on my right, and I'm going to be right here in the middle. And it, it, if that last person is you, 
then today embrace that fellowship of Christ. Learn to be a servant of all. You're in a great place to make that happen, full of loving people that will accept you right where you're at and lead you into a relationship to where you need to be. You don't have to have all the answers. We will help you. If you're here today and you're going, well, I'm looking for a church home, we would love to be your church home as a follower of Christ. But if you need some encouragement, if you're one of those and you just need some encouragement, the altar is open or you can come pray with one of us because as your pastor, I love you so much. I don't want you to leave the same way you entered. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, as we respond to you, our holy God, may you be glorified, may you be praised, may the name of Jesus be made more famous because we responded to your Holy Spirit's leadership. God, where there needs to be encouragement brought, would you bring encouragement? Where there needs to be love, would you bring love? Where there needs to be correction, would you bring correction? Where there needs to be salvation, oh, Father, would you bring salvation? We give this time to you as we respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me, please? And as you stand, step out and come down now, being obedient to the Father. Come quickly. In Jesus' name, come quickly. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender Now I'll make room
here is where I lay down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. such an amazing church family. You come in, you sing out, you worship, you have your Bible, you open your Bible. Some of you take notes, but you're in the Word, you're, you're turning the pages, you're focused in, you're listening. Thank you. Thank you for being such an awesome church family. Um, I, I have healthy pride, spiritual pride that I get to be your pastor. Thank you for praying for Sierra Murphy. Uh, some of you I have a bit were aware of a, of a weird, unknown how it happened infection in her foot and how they had to go in and take a, basically a bone biopsy, et cetera, et cetera, to try to figure out what was going on. According to Michelle Murphy, the doctors are amazed that she still has both feet. And so we praise God for that healing. Amen? We, we prayed for it, we asked for it, we would, be t we would not be right if we did not praise Him for it. Amen? Amen? So would you give God a praise right now, whatever that looks like for you, whatever that looks like. Thank you for praying for the Lloyd family as, as uh, they continue to grieve the loss of a, of a, a son, and, uh, a husband, a dad. Um, that funeral is coming up, it's actually on the church calendar you can see that on the website, on the church calendar, etc. Um, as you continue to worship, the tithe boxes are there and there and there. And someone said the other day, well, you need to explain what tithe is, Pastor, because that's a foreign concept to me. Well, okay, my apologies. Uh, tithe means 10%. It's a biblical word for 10%. And so what God asks us to do is take our paycheck before taxes, insurance, all that junk, and, and before all that happens, and to pull out 10% and to give to Him as an act of worship and obedience. And God says as we worship Him like that, we surrender that 10% that He will defend us from the devourer and He will bless us with more in our lap than we can hold. And it's an amazing, amazing study. Uh, do that sometime or sit down, buy me a cup of Durango Joe's and I'll explain it to you. Um. If you're a guest with us today, I'm going to be right outside those doors here in just a moment with your favorite Coke and candy bar, and uh, we've got a couple other gifts from the church that I get to have the privilege to extend to you. So come join me right over there if you would, 
and uh, I'd love to meet you, say hi to you, and extend to you some gifts. And if, is there anything else? Yay, thanks for being here with us. Wow. California and Texas? Oregon. Oregon. Nice. Thanks for coming to worship with us today. Thanks for being here. And um, totally spaced your name. <laughs> Darren. I'm looking at him going, it's not Santa Claus. <laughs> All right. He asked if he could share a quick word that the Father has uh, given him. And so you don't have to be seated because it's going to be fast. Yeah, you got the ring. Okay. And I'll roll. All right. He said less is more to less when I left, so the pressure's on. But no, not really. But there's so much that I want to say, but I can't even say because it's for another day. And he just loaded with a bunch of more nuggets, and now I got to try to stay focused because my assignment today is to ask each and every one of us myself included to take a half a step back take a full step back if you can but this is in the spirit if you can without stomping on somebody's toes because ministry is dirty so if you can just take a moment and step back and allow the Holy Spirit to just Minister what was just ministered to us, number one. Step a little closer, the feedback will stop. Number one. And number two, he wants to do something in each and every one of our lives. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Yes, we can. But can he do all things through you? Mm. All the things that he wants to do, not what we want to do, not what somebody else wants to do. Can he do all things through you? through me, through us. So just, just take one moment to do that, please. explaining because I can do that I went to the wrong the wrong scripture that sister Deborah and the sisters were reading in this first Thessalonians chapter 4 and I'm not going to go too far but it's called the, the call to sanctif sanctification and before that it's it's encouraged by Timothy it's prayer for the church it goes up to, to anxiety in Athens so th there's all these emotions and all these things going on but just uh, on your own, if you want to read further, but it says in verse 1, Additionally then, brothers and sisters, we ask and encourage you in the Lord Jesus that you have received instruction from us on how you should live and please God. As you are doing, do this even more. For you know what commands we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Verse 3, For this is God's will, your sanctification, that you keep away and I'm going to stop right there. You take it all the way down as far as the Lord leads you to go. As I was going out the door, I didn't get to my daily bread today, but it, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But it's Deuteronomy 31, verse 1 through 8. Because my, my part as a family is this, but my part as a, as a friend and a brother in Christ is, is we honor God first. So many times we honor the living, the the ones who's passed, we, we honor everything before God. So we honor God. And it's my honor to be able to allow God to speak through me to honor Brother Kent and the Wimpy family. Because I, I didn't spend one minute, minute with this man. Just brief moments. Several times. But this is the second time it's happened in my life. And supernaturally, something was happening between me and Mr. Kent, multiple times. And he even came and asked me my name one day. What's your name? I have trouble with I said, no problem. I, I rolled like the same way. So I told him, and he said, oh, okay. 
But he just kept looking at me with this deepness and this deepness. And I, I still don't know what it is. And this has happened years ago, several years back. This is my third year here. So now he's allowed me to be obedient, to do something I didn't want to do. I'm pretty bold, but I get nervous. And I'm nervous right now. But to allow God to do what he wants to do. And that I'm honored that I get to give back on this day and honor him and your mother, which I never knew, but I will. Because there are matriarchs and patriarchs that was in this church, and I don't have to be here. I don't need to have no stories. But they, there's a foundation that was laid here, and I, I believe we're honoring them by no one has to take that pressure, but as a team, we should step up around the Wimpy family and around Mike Napier and Cindy Napier and all the leadership and all the people and as a team, let's, let's build on this foundation. It's Good imperative word. that we do so. Good word. Good word. Amen. And so we honor God before we honor each other. It's, it's good to have good friends and favorite friends and all that. I love this man. I'd, I'd, spend, I'd spend every day with him if I could. But we got to allow God to have his time and his way. So we walk in the spirit and not the flesh. Amen. Amen. And for the, the, the Wimpy family, thank you and welcome all of you. And, I, and I, I'm sorry for your loss, but it was heaven's gain. Amen. And I know there's grief, so don't, don't skip that process. Don't let anybody push you through that. We're supposed to keep it all together. It's okay not to be okay. But take that time and go through that process. And you got a family here. You have a pastor here, his wife, the eldership. Brothers and sisters, if you need me, call me. Because that man instilled things in my life that he did, I don't know if he knew. I think he knew. And I still don't know, but I believe it's going to be unleashed in here. And that's to all the daughters and the son-in-laws. I love you all. I love you all. You brothers are special to me. Every, all three of you and beyond the family. I don't even know. And you, and you three sisters. So. Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being obedient and sharing. Amen, church? Amen. Father, we do thank you for the legacy. We thank you, Father, for a legacy that is left to continue to live out, one of service and love. And so, God, may each of us continue to keep our eyes focused on Jesus the one that instilled the faith in us and the one that's perfecting it even today. And may it all be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thanks for being here. See you tonight for discipleship. And uh, guest, I'm going to come right over here and see you. Oh, wait, come here. We got Chrissy Deal. Let me introduce to you Chrissy Deal. This is Chrissy. She comes this morning moving her membership to First Baptist Church of Aztec. Would you give it up for Chrissy, please? Come by and love on her and tell her hi before you leave. God bless you.